We, we know there's going to be phase going in with Sawlag again. A fantastic champion for Burial Chamber, I find. He has so much room to just pretty much build up that top speed. We've seen some pretty disgusting Sawlag rocket jumps on this map when it's pretty much going top speed, going for the rocket jump near sort of like mega health and just cover so much space that the only way you can really stop Sawlag is to actually get that one like clutch rail before she lands and that's pretty much it. So I'd be excited to see if FaZe kind of can really bring that to the table. I have no doubt he can because FaZe, you know, for those that... Um, I know FaZe is one of the sort of... Uh, I suppose out, out of the, the lineup for Maestro, one of the, the slightly lesser known players of, of the roster, purely because we haven't seen him as part of the roster as long, you know, because you see Razy consistently in Duel all the time. FaZe does play Duel as well. Obviously, he's qualified in recent tournaments. Uh, I believe, you know, for things like Paris Games Week and stuff like that, we've seen FaZe play quite well. Um, but at the same time, I'm excited to see what he can bring to the table with Sawlag because he's been consistently playing strong with it today. I think razy has been playing really well in Sacrifice from the previous qualifier to now. I think there's been quite a distinct change where Razy didn't look, I suppose, as comfortable in Sacrifice, first of all, because he's obviously known as being such a ridiculously prominent dueler, um, but taking that step into sacrifice now he's joined the Miser roster, it's kind of really taught him to sort of get his head around this other game mode, which I feel like the progress from the previous qualifier to now has been quite significant. Yeah, uh, but also we, we, we uh, you have to remember that we are now in the loser's side. So there is no room, mo no more room for mistakes. But you look at the, the 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 quality of like the caliber of players that are on the side of cash right now. I mean, Avec. You know, I, I think Avec is one that sort of goes under the radar a little bit in sort of these weekly events because we don't we we don't see him every single week. Obviously, we didn't see him at Denver. So it's like you you kind of you know these players are going to be there anyway because I, I believe Avec is there for Duel, right? For Dreamhack Winter, I believe he's there. He's on the, the list of invited players. But uh, for Winter, I believe he qualified himself. It was him and Kilson for that first European week. Oh, of course. Really, really good result, actually, for him there on the dual side. But here we go. Going into Burial Chamber. But I guess it's a question of whether these players uh, are going to be there for both modes, right? Or is it just going to be the one they focus on? Well, having no choice but to focus on both is quite a nice problem to have, considering how much money is on the line of Dreamhack Winter. There's the early drop-off, but it looks like for now, it's going to be Cash that have the soul in hand. Razy almost like he was already dedicated to trying to drop that off, but it actually looks like there's a bit of patience, and that was actually quite a okay, good awareness. Wanted to be careful. Yeah, he wanted to make sure that he had the, the bodies with him to basically escort him to the point, but... Well, it's almost, like they, power it's almost like they expected them to run towards Obelisk B, which is why so many members of Maestro kind of piled in towards B, and then a few seconds later, it gets dropped off at A, almost like Kilson was ready for that. Yeah, it does seem like it. Good start for Cash as they were able to steal away the power up as well as get that first drop off. This is the best case scenario start for them, really. Well, as we've seen many, many, many times before, this is probably going to be like a guaranteed 30% if there's no challenges to be made whatsoever. But there's plenty of members of Maestro to try and deal with this one. Syndrome is super weak, but if he can get one good shot, oh. Crazy finishes the job. Actually, quite surprised to see him survive that so close, but he was able to escape temporarily. Has a little bit of the quad damage to clean up, but before it runs out, Cash have already obtained a comfortable 30%. Yeah, it's a great start for sure. Kilson is trying to stop. Oh, this is a little mid-air rocket, but there's a lot of people here for Cash to try and hold on to this. Kilson, getting that plasma trail around, trying not to let Maestro come in through, but they still have all four people here, it seems, but managing to take at least one with him. But it is going to be phased. That cleans up that point. They're going to take the soul away now. Can they get away? It's a long journey between now, but no! Sinjo oh. with a quick double kill with the gauntlet! Nowhere to go for Maestro. Cash now looking at 50% almost already. It's crazy, really. I, I feel like Maestro have done a really good job of actually fighting on the point. Like, they've won quite a lot of these fights, but they've not really been able to do anything with the soul because of it. We're already at 60%. Good turnaround for Cash. Quick mid air for FaZe, though, but I mean, the whole time, even though Maestro are getting a nice amount of frags, they're still building up a lot of percentage for Cash. Still have a lot of work to do, but Razy now, for the first time, taking it out of the building, getting himself some heavy armor on the way. It's already, it looks like at least two people have cash ready. No, one in the way here. Oh, no, is there in time? It's going to be a quick drop off for Razy. Nice pathing through. Very impressive movement. A lot of stack as well. I was going to touch on this actually in the, in the previous series when we saw Maestro play against Winra, but I'm, I'm really happy that Maestro have decided to allow Razy to sort of be their dedicated. Uh, Anarchy player now because he obviously used to be phased before. He was filling big shoes when he was sort of taking Vu's role, with Vu having one of the most impressive anarchies in the world because of just the legacy he has with that form of movement. Um, but I feel like, you know, FaZe did a good job with anarchy, but with Razy being particularly strong with that anarchy now, it's, wow. very, it's very smart for Maestro. They've allowed FaZe to take that sword like role or that big body role, and it's now Razy that consistently sits with anarchy and has been doing well. But they're both performing amazingly well during this single defense at the moment. Now we can see Maestro with 30% already. 
half the way to catching up to Cash, but I mean, just just look at this. This entire defense started off with you know, good protection for, for, from FaZe for a little while, I think. But ultimately, he was just that one-man army on the defense. And a quick turnaround, Maestro with that 40%. I mean, look, the look at the kill feed. They're just dropping one at a time. Actually, <laughs> you know what? the splash thought? damage of the obelisk. There, there was something particularly sick about that. How he knocked him up into the end instead of going for the direct, he actually used the obelisk to guarantee the splash damage. That was pretty cool. I respect that. Oh, no, there's a quick suicide from Razy, but FaZe with two kills on the rocket launcher. That's gonna... Actually, we evened out completely. That was a perfect start for Cash, but just as quickly as that. Maestro, taking things out. There we go. 63 versus 63. They have lost a couple. Syndrome with the double kill. Been able to take the soul. They've got to try and get away. Kilson has definitely got a slash that cannot be underestimated. We've seen some great things coming out of his slash in the past. I love Hell's use of these point blank weapons. Uh, we were talking about how impressive his shotgun was earlier on, but also his choice of when to go for the gauntlet. Yeah, he's just in those situations where he knows they have to pass him, so it's almost guaranteed damage if they're not ready for him to be there. Crazy now, running onto the soul. I get through, going for the heavy armor, but I mean, getting dangerously close to A, I think here. He's gonna have to be careful. Well, I think if it, it's not really a, a necessarily a bad thing if you're gonna be hanging around near the enemy's obelisk because it's likely that everyone on the enemy team, like right there, they're likely to be around your obelisk because they're expecting you to try and drop it off. You're almost going to be safer near their side because you have a higher chance of enemies not being around. And here comes FaZe with that quad damage. Another power up for FaZe. Yep. And the fact they've got pretty much just 20% left to go and they have a lot of that quad damage left to work with, this is going to be at least another 10% before this quad is done. But ever since the first time Maestro got Ooh. hold, ever since the first time Maestro got hold of his soul, like has it even been captured by Cash? Have they managed to get it out of here at all? I don't think they have been able to. It's very important for Maestro to show that even if they are forced to hold off a bunch of percentage from Cash very early on, because pretty much that 63% was from the very beginning, and, and it was very quick how it built up. But the well, recovery from Maestro and how they've been able to turn this one around so dominantly, very, very good. There's still hope for Cash, but it's gonna have to be dangerous now. It's Maestro at 96%. They have only a few seconds left of holding it on to go with. Avec trying to get through that Berserk, but will not be able to get around in time. That, that, uh, that plasma trail is ready to go. Oh no, it's stuck on the wall. Wait, is it still up there? It oh, was, they got it. They picked it up. Oh, it was almost stuck in the doorway. Someone has to sort of make the ultimate sacrifice and do some of that damage for the rocket jump. But Avec is doing an amazing job of just getting so many frags, but he just consistently cannot get away with this soul. He's using that quick boost to try and get through again. Didn't really accomplish as much speed as I think he was after, and he did it because he actually fumbled the first attempt. He had to take a little bit more damage I think he was happy to take, so it's no surprise to see him go down so quickly when it was actually oh. starting to get moving. In that situation, Razor was able to at least trade out to uh, kill the Soul Carrier, but he did die in this situation, but FaZe still trying to get through, but he has a lot of people on him. He's gonna die here for sure. Avec now holding on to it, trying to throw it away, but hell, with that chase down Gauntlet. Get that frag. Razy now pick up the Mega Health. I think that Mega uh -oh. that Mega may have secured this round for Razy. The fact that he was so comfortably able to drop that one off, making sure he had more than enough health to get the job done. I don't think they're going to get back to this Obelisk in time, and they can't. That is round one for Maestro Gaming. Almost close, but no cigar for Cash. They, they looked really good early on. You know, they, they, they established a dominating lead early. They got the first Obelisk they wanted. They got the first capture. They got the first power-up. But, I mean... We have to talk about how quickly that can turn around. You know, Ma Maestro, they were struggling to capture for a while, but all it took was one good attack, and Cash never saw it at their obelisk again. But to be honest, I, what that does show is that Cash pretty much needs to get that good start to stay in this to stay in this fight because we saw it previously when they fought in the winners bracket. When Maestro get that momentum going and they do get a good solid defense on deck, it's been kind of hard. And Hell does manage to get two, but look at the rails, Hal and Kilson combined. Do manage to seize a couple. There we go. They're just trading these frags back and forth. Literally back and forth. Syndrome, can he drop this or will he go down too? No, oh, he's deliberately going for this obelisk again. He wants it, but no, he died so close to it. And FaZe is going to drop it off. All that work stolen away at the last possible second. FaZe Thanks. with that cheeky steal. Thanks for the drop off, buddy boy. Kilson has the quad damage though, so that mega health, I think he's going to be phase. quite Crouch dangerous. Did he just survive a quad damage super shot? I mean, I am disgusted that he survived. Because <laughs> didn't the, the definitely the majority look like it hit him there? That's going to be a steal for sure, at least. Oh no, Razy, get it on another one. 
But Syndra, <laughs> all three of them picked up for damage there at the time, just at the end. Quad damage only has a few seconds left on it. Not a huge amount accomplished with that quad, though. They've been able to survive temporarily, but oh, it's almost like they tried to out of bounds it, but it bumped into the uh, pillar. Kilson, he's a nice amount of health, but can he get there alive? I think there's going to be plenty of people waiting to head him off. So you look at his health meter. I'm not really surprised to see who might go down here, but let's see. Hell was distracted, so that's one down. But look at Maestro. They're just lying in wait. They're not going to let him get back to that obelisk without a fight. He's looking for safe passage. I mean, ultimately, you don't want to just run in and make sure you die because. Maestro, you know, we've seen what they can do with one good capture. You can't afford to give this away to them, especially now they're starting with the lead. But Supreme Patience from Kilston here, very reluctant to move until he knows that at least, you know, at least one of them are dead. But that's three. But that's probably going to yeah. be him going in now. We can see all three of them gone. Yeah, the, the, the second we realized that that fight completely went in their favor, that's when the communication must have gone in. And then went, right, guys, the coast is clear. Now you can go in and finish the job. But hell, piling full face into that one. Interesting to see how they have to defend this obelisk now. Obviously, they had obelisk A last time, and it was a great defense for them, but now things have been obviously turned around on their head. We'll see how they can do. Things are looking good for them. They're probably going to at least tie out here, but two members of Maestro here. Game one kills Garpy. Hell getting another one, but Garpy's going to drop. Quite an even fight here. Avec cleaning up, getting a double there on the defense. Now, Cash is still holding on to it. 20% 16. They now have the lead, but that quad damage is going to be looming over the next few seconds. We'll see them starting to get in position to contest it. They have the lead for now, though, which is great for them. Uh, it's just in that previous round where they pretty much only had one good defense, and that was it. From that point, they couldn't really defend. But how? The second he gets that core damage, things are looking up. Uh, did FaZe pick up core damage and then suicide immediately? Or did he suicide before core damage spawn? I'm not quite sure, actually. Sometimes it can be really sort of hard to keep track of how quickly these frags go back and forth. But all that we know that is important right now is that Razy has the quad. He's trying to protect the rest of his team to go through. How goes down, but Razy. Very, very weak. I love that turnaround to take out Kilson, but with six health left, Syndrome, that crucial 180 turnaround into the shotgun blast. Very important that he landed that shot. That was beautiful from Razy, though. That was just frag after frag. Pursuer from Pursuer. Oh, no. That was full now, though, a little bit later. So it's at least getting the soul back. But it looks like members of Cash here trying to contest it. Might even fight here. No, FaZe getting a quick double on that defense and now has the high ground it's over he has that rocket launcher in hand i feel like phases um defense on these obelisks has been quite impressive so far like i, I know that when you pick sawlag you kind of have that really sort of dedicated defender role naturally but phase like some of these defenses have been very significant so far on this map I think it's Razy as well, though. I, I think, although FaZe has just been an amazing fragger for the team, like you, you can't really take away from the amount of damage that Razy is also doing. You know, considering that the, the two of them have effectively swapped champions here now, it's going to be Razy on the uh, Anarchy, you know, as opposed to the Sword like we normally see. But Razy one of those players that, you know, uh, there were a lot of people saying, you know, is, is the Lightning Gun change going to hit Razy really hard? You know, players like Razy, are they going to suffer greatly with that Lightning Gun adjustment? But clearly, he is not struggling with that at, at all. Well, the unavoidable question that was asked was, will the LG affect Razy more than anyone else? And funnily enough, at Denver, and I think Razy had one of the most impressive post-patch LGs out of anyone in that entire tournament. So he definitely did a good job of proving people wrong, in essence. And obviously, winning the tournament helps as well, but... I think a terrible winner. way to build those props, to build those uh, credentials, I suppose. Razy still going through. Much more of a back and forth round this time, to be honest. But even though it's back and forth, Maestro remain in the lead for now. Yeah, Razy, you can see he's been being patient here. You know, the protection's going to be going towards Cash so far. He's just trying to stall out for time here, I think. No point, cat, no point dropping off until, if you can see, they've got the protection, but he's going to do it anyway. And that protection has some of the time used here, just under half of it left to go. Yeah, those defensive soul carries, we, we see them a lot uh, when the, the power-up doesn't go in your favor, and it's quite obvious that the power-up's not going in your favor as well. Oh, but he gave it up as well. Albeit near the end, so only a few seconds, but still, that's a few seconds Maestro have to build this lead even further. Solid defense for now. Look how all four members are very, very comfortably sitting in this obelisk. All but three of them flying in at the same time. That's going to be really good control cash. From three different entrances, three people came in. And look at that. That coordinated attack executed perfectly. I was a big fan of that coordination. I think it worked wonders for cash, but that's, that's half of it, right? You know, half of it is attacking the obelisk. The other half is actually getting it back to yours. And that's where teams can have a little bit of a trouble. And I think that's, that's what Maestro Gaming consistently excel at, is the second the soul doesn't go in their favor, they are more than happy to take that fight in the middle. Avec tries to go for the reset, and even though he doesn't quite get it originally, does survive long enough to drop it off. 
Oh, but Hell is there ready and waiting with loads of health ready to go. Walks through a little bit of a plasma show, doesn't take too much damage, and unfortunately that ring out on the, uh, the, the off-map, I suppose, on the soul. It's actually giving it back to Maestro in the long run, and they have it again. Yeah, I think that reset was actually more beneficial for Maestro, um, because when you see the reset attempt fumble, and, and then you have to go for it a second time, if you see that, you're, all, you're obviously going to coordinate that to your, to your team, saying, right, they're going for the reset. Boys, get ready for the fight in the middle of the map. And that's exactly what Hell did. The second he realized it was even going to be a possibility, he was already in the middle of the map, ready to pick things up. Avex popping Berserk to try and get out of there. Stuck in the air temporarily. The turnaround into the punch, though, doing a bit of damage, but Garpy has been able to pick things up. Syndrome tries to fight this. Hell collects uh -oh. the quad. This is likely to be the round. If they drop this off now with all of this quad damage, it's going to be very hard for them to challenge this. This is a full here. quad. Hell has that super shotgun locked and loaded, ready to go. They have 6%, 5% left to go, and Hell is still racking up the frags. Avex going to fall down. And that's going to be Hal on top as well. That is probably going to be the map. If they can't contest, they have the advantage completely here. And that will be the map going the way of Maestro Gaming after a very shaky first round. They looked very strong by the end of that first map. I think a huge part of this comes from players like Hell. And I think, um, like, Hell he has a lot of important frags. He has a lot of important power-up runs. Like, we we've said this a lot before, but... Whenever you watch um, Hell play and Sacrifice, he's one of the most prominent players on the Maestro team for securing power-ups and little things like that. The, the Sacrifice-specific plays that you have to make. Um, I think because Hell, even though he does compete in Duel as well, it's not as much of his focus when it comes uh, to playing among the Maestro boys. When you play Sacrifice as much as someone like Hell does, his team plays are so prominent. But Maestro together, because they've been playing together so long as a constant team, their ability to, those those quick decisions you have to make in team modes like Sacrifice, like when the soul doesn't go in your favor, heading them off, meeting them in the middle. When a reset happens, like right at the end, when Avec tried to reset the soul, Hell was right in there in the middle of the map, ready to pick up the pieces. It's this next level coordination that you just need at this level that I think makes Maestro Gaming such a strong team. Indeed, but going into Blood Covenant as the second map, do you think we're going to see FaZe go back to that scale barrier we saw before? I mean, I know this is a, quite a popular map for that champion specifically, and I think FaZe had a particularly strong showing on it last time. I'd be surprised to not see him go with it now. We, 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 you never know, really. I think we're reaching a point in Sacrifice where the changing champions per map, depending on whatever map you're on, starts to make a lot of sense because I think versatility is... So important in sacrifice, you know, if you have an approach that you try and take, even if that, that one approach that you've gone throws someone off guard or they're not used to dealing with a certain champion or a certain way you play, seeing as it's best of three rounds, one round before a team catches their bearings can be all you need. But scale bearer coming out of both teams there, so we're going to see some quite consistent attacks on the power up, I think. Yeah, I mean, it's just a good map for the champion, you know. We, we, we can repeat ourselves about it all we want, but it doesn't stop becoming relevant, you know. The, you have that ability to contest the power-up. You come out of a teleporter. There's always so much you can do to prepare against that. He's amazing for taking up that first soul because you can effectively, you know, just sort of curve around with that ball rush and go from one doorway to the other. Um, he covers a lot of distance. You know, it's quite easy for him to move around and gain a lot of distance with that ball rush. And again, short cooldown. Like, it's, it's a good champion for the map. And we are, at this point, looking at players that have been putting a lot of time. So it's going to be how uh, scale back for cash and it's going to be maestro's phase again picking it up this time whereas he had a terrific showing with scale bearer in the first series of the day i think but uh, ultimately don't think i mean obviously they didn't win in the end but they he had he particularly had a good showing on this champion now in europe today we've not seen a lot of nicks get selected i think that's no. that's, that's quite interesting because there was a point where she was pretty much on almost everyone's lineup um but today definitely not looking to be as much of a constant champion we're seeing get selected. I mean, she's been there. She just hasn't been there every time. You know, the same yeah. way we're seeing Anarchy without fail, um, a lot of Slash, a lot of um, you know, other picks like that. Whereas Nyx, like you said, has been core for a while in various different modes. But today, haven't we seen as much of her as we might have expected? Now, Maestro, seeing as they, they did, for those that may have just joined us or whatever, they have defeated Cash before in this exact tournament. So I thought that the fact that Maestro have beat them in tournament before today, they've been able to get this first map. I think they're pretty much riding uh, the most amount of momentum they could be riding at all, and they need to get this win, obviously, to move into Grand Finals to get their rematch versus WinRAR licensed salesman. I do feel like Cash have quite a tall order in front of them right now. Yeah, I mean, it's going to be tough. And officially, you can say the odds are stacked up because they did lose to Maestro before. This is a run back. They are playing for the second time in this tournament and they are already a map down again. So, you know, they're not going to be happy about that. This is their final chance to try and change that around. 
Owl getting a lot of damage with this nail gun. But this is where things get crucial, that five second mark before the soul spawns. You can't give up too many frags here. Going into the plasma trail to drop things off. Unfortunately, Kilson with that detonation. And Kilson has shown that his slash movement on this map is very impressive Wow, indeed. but crazy there, that stoic defender. With that nail gun getting so much damage on the board and already Maestro have that first capture. And the first... Actually, who, who's got the ball rush? They both used it. I mean, there's, there's going to be phases going to have his ball rush up ready to contest. And unfortunately, there's not going to be a ball rush there for Cash. Looks like he might have had to use it defensively, though, because he used it before the quad appeared. Hasn't really affected him too much. Razy was able to get the quad, but unfortunately, with the low health he was on, only able to have it for so long. FaZe himself, very, very weak, but he's going to go for that tactical suicide, of course, allowing Garpy to collect the power-up instead. However, the time it took for them to fight for the quad did give Cash a little bit of time to try and waste that and get the soul away. But the problem is, they're still yet to get a little bit of percentage. They're probably going to drop this one off, but Garpy, he's lying in wait with the quad damage. Will they be able to get this alive? I'm not so sure. Kilson with a very crucial 1v1. But FaZe was able to take the soul. I think Avec able to steal it away too. Ooh. No! No. It's taken out immediately first. Razy now going in, trying to get it through as far away from this obelisk as possible. Maestro, where would to get 20% up first? Oh no! <laughs> That's uh, really unfortunate. He tried to throw the soul away to pop the injection, but he kind of like chucked it into the archway and it bounced not only at the top, but it fell back down on the bottom and allowed Hal to completely pick it up. That was a little bit of an execution error right there. His mistake is punished quite heavily. Oh. Now almost the entire team is dead. They're trying to contest this at least, but probably going to die. Yes. And that has now put Cash back into the game. And now they've got some percentage on the board. It's quite remarkable how one mistake can cause something to happen like this, right? Where Cash, that, that one, essentially that one failed soul drop is going to allow Cash to even things out at least. Maybe even take the lead. Just looking that way. No, no, even now they're in the lead. That one mistake. Poor Razy. Makes very few mistakes today, but the one he does. We see it, and that's what happens because that's it's always the way, isn't it? Comes hell, making that plasma trail. Or oh, we was able to steal the soul away, but actually, no, yeah, Racy's able to steal it, but no, dies anyway. It must have been a direct or something substantial. Let's get one gauntlet, but this is FaZe with that chunky scale bearer. Yeah, hell has to go for a detour, cannot walk face first into all those nails. Does get away from the plasma trail. A little bit too quick for Kilson to react with the detonation. But he is going to try and head them off anyway. Oh, they've dropped things off, but Kilson lying in wait. Wasn't able to get the detonation on the plasma trail, but he is able to get the frag on the point regardless. But here comes FaZe! Two kills. And that's the protection, at least goes to Cash. So Cash do still have protection. Syndrome is going to be there. Was forced to pop the injection to not die, but this is going to be a good attacker now. Protected Anarchy. I guess all the way to... No, Maestro still have it. Oh, that plasma trail explosion didn't quite detonate in time, I think. I don't think it quite connected. He took a little bit of residual damage, but not the big burst. There are plenty of people trying to chase him down, though. Actually, in fact, everyone circling in on Syndrome. But how? The double. Oh, he is just... Look at this airstrike from above. Four members with the rocket launcher. Oh, and he tries to double back, but Avec wise to it. Turns of course. Immediately. I mean, of course Avec was ready for that one, of course. How very weak, but he's able Dead to even though. 33, 33 cash now to build on that percentage, but a couple of frags for Maestro to help him attack on this one. And he's going to drop two. How will fall down to Garpy. Oh, nice. Oh, didn't hear that one. I was just like seeing. Wow, he's just exchanging frag for frag. Razy though, able to salvage, but very low as well himself. I think we're seeing how, how quickly these can go back and forth, though, you know, because that, that, with the rocket launcher is as common and everyone's got a rocket and everyone's doing so much damage. I mean, you will just be deleted out of nowhere in the blink of an eye. Well, and sacrifice always comes down to what you do with the life that you have, because understandably, you're going to die a ton. So you need to make sure that when you respawn, you know, you need to make sure that you're doing something super, super significant, because ultimately, you're on borrowed time the second you've hit that respawn button. Oh, but hell, with that unfortunate suicide, Maestro still were able to pull off ahead there. Garpy still defending. Bring this up. Hal has a rocket launcher too. They're making sure they have as much rockets as possible before going down, especially when you're attacking this obelisk. I think it's because it appears so close to the rocket launcher location as well. But here comes the power up. I like the level of control they're starting to establish here, though, with this rocket. Hell goes down. Very impressive there from Hal. But there's the timing. And they collide! FaZe goes down because he gets hit by the rocket point blank, but Razy is able to come off better in the exchange. But he can't survive long enough. A very crucial super shotgun blast to miss. And it's going to allow Avec to pick up the pieces. And look, let's bring this one back. And that's going to be that quad damage machine gun just giving that volleying damage from a distance. Oof! Into another frag. Avec. 
getting hold of that quad damage was so important as he's putting it to perfect use as the entire team is just wasted. I mean, this is Avec. He has disgustingly accurate aim. One of the most talented duelers in the world. And he's got quad damage. He's definitely got to be worried about that. Has given Cash now a chance to close this distance. It's Kilson and Hal doing an amazing job defending. FaZe running in. Does he have any backup or is he alone? Because he's very much by himself at the moment. Oh, oh. they all come up to wow. follow. Oh, and flinging wow. in. The fisticuffs. Havoc actually still has a little bit of it left. He's going to finish crazy as well. It's been a good defense. This map's been a good pick for them so far. Only a little bit and they're going to tie things up. And then with not much of the round left after that point, pretty much going to roughly be around 70% each. Bar 2% either way. Good old cash. Oof. Nice quick mid-air rail. Managed now they're now pulling up ahead slightly. Cash 72 to 68. This is a very close round. Another frag. Garpy. Get one on the board with that Berserk. Oof. Trying to land and wait. Stuck with his out for a little while. Still falls down, but does a lot of damage beforehand, at least. I think maybe in that situation, Garpy would have liked to have had his Berserk ready for maybe half a second longer, just so he could have got that air lock on. Definitely would have done more damage than the default SMG he had in hand at the time. Tries to go for that mid-air rocket, but obviously this is anarchy. It's a little bit hard to hit with those mid-air rockets because of his increased air mobility passive. Razy still alive. Actually impressive that he survived that long with so many people firing at him at the same time. Faze trying to do what he can, take the soul back, but unfortunately just so many people around. This is such a good turnaround. Cash were looking again. They were behind a lot of time, but looks like this, 97%. Actually wasting the bull rush there, but we're able to get the protection. This is probably the round if Syndrome, unless he dies here right now, this is probably going to be it because this is a protected anarchy. But I mean, they he's got full health and heavy armor and an injection. I don't know how likely it's going to be that Syndrome dies here. Crazy tries to waste time, but I mean, how could they stop this guy? How are they going to stop this guy from just running into his obelisk, dropping it off, wow. and then just surviving? That's probably the round. I think that is it. Yes, yeah, Syndrome, yep. he just ran past everything. Full steam ahead. Most health and at least heavily stacked armor. I mean, the second he got that protection, the round was pretty much done. You know, he caught Razy off guard. Razy maybe tried to go uh, a little bit of a detour. I think he was deliberately taking a little bit of extra time to make sure that Syndrome wasn't really going to bump into him. We do see some players in Sacrifice, when they see a power-up go to the enemy team, they kind of wait with the soul, and they pretty much hide. You know, that they wait out that power-up time. Razy may have tried to do the same thing there. Syndrome just found him, and it's as simple as that. Well played overall from Cash, though. They definitely did. I mean, this would have been their map choice. It's a huge surprise to see them so good on it. I think a big part of that, though, is Avic definitely came out to play in that round. You know, getting a lot of those crucial frags, a lot of those crucial contesting the pickups. You get someone like Avic, the ability to do that, and he will take it. But this time, I should get a better start. Yeah, kills him slightly go down. Actually, wow, he took so much damage there. Surprised and still alive survived. too. Yeah, Always full health now. Picked up a lot of health on the way. I was very surprised to see him survive that one. I know Slash is deceivingly tanky compared to some of the smaller champions, but still. And now he's got the quad. This should be very comfortable for him to make this attack on the obelisk, but missing some of those super shotguns gets the final one phase. Absolutely deleted. Catches a good uh, reaction on the jump pad too. Wow. Oh, and Garpy managing to outdo the quad damage. Oof. With the fists all over the place. Quad damage Berserk. That's the traditional Doom Berserk. I mean, he just turned around as well. I mean, Hal was pretty much right behind him there. Using the last little ounce of this quad damage to get as many frags as he can right before it runs out. A couple of those shots will do a nice amount of damage, but unfortunately not enough to prevent Hal from at least being able to drop the soul off. It's going to waste a little bit of time. Phase drops things off anyway, but... Wow, two members. Cash coming in there. Hell getting another gauntlet kill. Syndrome here with that rocket ready to go. Trying to get these defensive frags. Garpy and Hell both fall down. Syndrome getting the injection, but still dies anyway to Razy. We're still trying to stop this attack, trying to stop this steal, but they have people here. Razy getting some nail gun damage. Ooh, two people going down to it there. Now Maestro again, Cash. They, they were able to steal the soul away multiple times, but they couldn't get it out of the room. So ultimately, Maestro have it still. They were able to halt some of that progress at least and slow them down somewhat, but. Right now, they do still have an impressive lead. Running out of rockets, actually. It's that corner that almost finished him off, but... He's alive long enough. Kilston meets him, and that's going to be rewarded by the Mega Health 2, which is going to make him a little bit of a pain to deal with right here. The defense coming through Garpy. Kilston's trying to be as hard to hit as possible, but Garpy does manage to actually win that 1v1. Very impressive. Hell! Falls down as well. Soul taken. Avec running as fast as possible with this Berserk, trying to get it back. 
And just one really well-coordinated attack. Cash going in as a four. You want to steal that away, but again, Maestro wiping them out almost immediately. But it's this, yes, it, it, dead. it's an element of like patience that we are starting to see teams do a lot more in sacrifices, waiting for all four players to be available, and then just making that push as a big group. You know, if they're able to coordinate targets, so they can delete people as quickly as possible while all four of them being on the point, it makes them very scary to deal with. Cash, they've been able to seize the protection as well. Here comes Syndrome. Though there is a lot of plasma trail around. He has the soul at least. They couldn't really contest with him there, trying to take it away. Again, a protected anarchy is very difficult to deal with, especially if he's trying to run this around. And immediately uses the power up to get the soul back. This is really well played from Cash overall. And now they can hold on to this for a little while. His protection is about to run out, but they got a lot out of it. I mean, to be honest, even with the uh, slightly smaller stack that Anarchy has in comparison to the larger champions, I definitely feel like Anarchy is one of the most dangerous champions to still have protection because of that mobility and because of his, uh, you know, the, the injection giving himself full health. Very, very hard to take down with protection available. There's almost no bad target for it, really, if you think about it, at least with the lineup they have here. You know, Whoa. none of the four champions on either team you want to be seeing glowing green, ready to do that. Heavy armor gets uh, used for a couple of seconds before Razy goes down there. Obviously with that heavy armor, but nine health, any rocket will finish you off. See, though Garpy unable to get too much distance as now Hal is dropping through. Oh, but Razy grinding up that gauntlet and now is able to steal it away. Cash, again, they, they did a really good job of seizing this last time, but it picked off slightly one at a time. Part of it can definitely come down to these like good starts. I feel like when Cash get a fantastic start, it can be quite good for them to sort of maintain that snowball effect, and they ultimately will either win or come close to winning. But Maestro, they've had a fantastic round so far. Phase is killed on the point, but Razor's there to salvage into a double gauntlet kill, and Hell comes flying with the gauntlet too. I think they've got a raging bloodlust. Now, in 15 seconds, we're going to see another power up score. So at this stage in the game, you know, if Maestro are able to secure the power up and comfortably get the power up before they drop things off, then we may see the round end. But I love this very important that Kilson was able to take the soul and deliver it. Kind of forces Maestro to split their attention. You know, th there's already Razy here. He's not going to be able to fight for this power up at all, which has allowed Hal to take the core damage. There just wasn't enough heads on that point. At the same time, yes, it's allowed Razy to drop off the soul. But now you're going to have a scale bearer coming in with a really impressive stack. The one detriment is no real weapons to fight. He's only got a heavy machine gun here. That's not exactly what they need. And this whole time, Maestro been building in hell on the other hand. I mean, flying in with that super shotgun that we know he is so good on. And that lightning gun also, but he is going to die. But quad damage doesn't have long left on it whatsoever. This entire time, Maestro have been building up percentage. Even if kills contest and take the soul away. I mean, that's a big difference now. Maestro on that 97%. This is going to be tough cash to hold on to. To be honest, I feel like Hal was in a very difficult situation there because even though he had the quad damage, I, obviously they were able to seize that because there wasn't as much attention put towards taking the quad. But even though he had the quad, he only had a starting weapon. So he had to take a little bit of extra time to actually get something that could help him out. And even then, it was only a heavy machine gun. So if you're trying to take out four people with a heavy machine gun, it's going to be kind of difficult because that's only one target at a time. I'm about getting a lot of those frags so Hal can get through, but Razy is there ready and waiting to stop him. Is he able to take away? No, it was dropped off from Cash at least, so they're going to have to try and contest this first. So it's one of those moments. They have to make that straight comeback. They can't allow a single drop off because Maestro simply need one more percent. How many times have we seen this in competitive sacrifice? How many times will we continue? And many to see times, it? and I think we'll see it many times more. This is good for Cash, however, they are managing to quite convincingly take out Maestro one at a time as they come in. I think Maestro going to have to really make sure they, they wait up and group up before they go in now. Well, they're going to kind of just feed into this defensive machine. I mean, if they get a couple of good fights in their favor, that's going to be an impressive amount of percentage climbed up. So, doing well in the fights, but just look at that coordinated attack. Hell, though, changes. He actually turns around at the last minute. Was he expecting Syndrome to maybe go through the doorway? I'm not sure, perhaps. Syndrome just defending so well so far, taking out attacker after attacker here. And he has a gauntlet trying to go for the kill, but no, it's not going to do it. But how looks like he got a choo choo with that full rush. He does have protection too, but if he can get through. I'm not quite sure how much that protection will help. They need to stop him before he de before he actually captures this. Is Razy going to slip the net? Can he do it? Can he do it? No! Avec meets him in the middle. Here comes Hal, and now he's got the protection. This is going to be so hard to fight back from. 
the protection only has so much longer left. Only a few seconds left, but the ball rush is going to go flying through that damage reduction. He's going to take no damage yet. They're ready and waiting, but Hell is going to drop down anyway. 16 health left. Hal is left still alive. This is still around that Cash can win. Yep, don't count these guys out. They simply need 20 more percent, and they're going to win this round. And it will be the map. If Maestro let this round slip uh -oh. through their fingers, then I would be very concerned indeed. But as I've said that, they've got an impressive triple, and there's all four of them all together. This final fight is definitely going to shape the way this round gets played out. I mean, they're grouped as a four. They are all here. Easy popping, getting that speed increase. Going to capture it from above. Can they stop him? I don't think they can stop him from dropping it. But now they have to wipe this point. They cannot let them contest. Crazy. He's going to get a frag, as will Garpy, as will FaZe. That is probably going to be the round now. Unless one of them, no, that is going to be it. And Maestro fighting back one round apiece. They are now match point on eliminating Cash from the tournament. To be honest, I feel like both of these teams are going to be riding a lot of buzz from that. You know, yes, Cash lost the round, but they're in the progress of making a good comeback. They just had a really impressive fight in their favor. Their power up control has been very impressive, and it's been, you know, just a, a complete necessity for keeping them in these fights. But at the same time, Maestro, if they lost that round, I would have been very worried for them because obviously if they lost that round, it would have been the map. They would have gone down to the final map. But seeing as it was a 99 to a very low percentage, I actually can't remember what it was exactly, but a very impressive comeback nonetheless, it would have been a very tough pill to swallow for Maestro to lose that. So it's important that they won that second round for sure. Now coming in that ball rush. I used to think they, they clashed heads, but Garpy's still going to be able to get it. Oh, but they're ready and waiting to stop him. Oh, and he's going to get taken out, and Kilson going to get the safe capture. No, he drops it off first. Oh, but they managed to drop it off at least. I thought maybe he'd uh, thrown it at the obelisk and it bounced back too far. Well, temporary, it actually almost did for a point, but because there were so many of them on the point, it probably was the end of the world for them. But Cash with an early lead, they've got 10% already. Syndrome takes the quad two, and he's able to very, actually very impressively stay alive and dodge all that attack stuff. Still has a lot of this quad damage left as well, so plenty of damage left to be done here. Great start. That's exactly what Cash did oh, yeah. after a round like that. Go for damage ever so slightly. About, uh, about to run away. Just about. And I mean, there you go. 30%. Just like that. We've seen it so many times when you get that early soul. I mean, that was fast. Power up. Like that, that, that's a one minute lead immediately. 30% straight away. And I think the earlier you get the soul, the more time you have to fight for that power up, right? You know, where you get these, the early drop off, you and the rest of your team can actually put all of your resources into making sure you then get the power up as well. But here comes Razy. I think he's been quite an unsung hero of knowing when to sort of sneak in there and take the soul. He pretty much went right under Cash's noses and just stole the soul away from him. Well, how long That's not all that time. I mean, he's got a lot of damage on the go from up here. Doing a good job, but enemy, oh, the soul's been taken away. But and immediately taken back again. Crazy's been you know, quite the MVP for Maestro so far. Like his, his ability to pretty much just sneak in there and get the soul away. And it's, it's in some ways, even though there's going to be communication there, some of these decisions will be quite inde independent decisions. So he's being quite opportunistic and taking these moments where he thinks it's just time to sneak in. And it's worked out. You know, Maestro back in the fight now. In a little bit more time, they'll be evening things out quite comfortably. Well, for what was a strong start for Cash, Maestro have almost evened things up straight away. Almost just as fast. They can hear they're trying to contest, but there's a lot of Maestro. All four of them are here contesting. And it's not going to be an easy take. So they are just dropping like flies to Maestro on this point, and now they've pulled their head. Yep, they've taken the lead. And with 10 seconds left on this power up, seeing as they just won that fight, I think this is going to be quite an even playing field for this power up fight at the very least. Syndrome forced to retreat temporarily. But here come the rest. The bull rush phase with the perfect timing on his bull rush. And there we go, that super nail gun. I mean, he is just going to be dishing out the damage left, right, and center. And now, with the rocket launcher, he can safely run back and just defend for the rest of the protection duration. Face timed it well. However, Cash were able to use that time to group up on the obelisk and steal it away. Syndrome now trying to move through. I mean, they're fighting against the protection. They're not hasty to drop this off. They don't want to accidentally just give it right back to Maestro. Yeah, I think they're going to be a little bit more comfortable wasting some of that time. They tried to go in for this. Uh, injection, but unfortunately actually allowed Razy to pick things up, and he's just getting damage boosted. You know, that, that, that classic sort of anarchy movement where... Oh, but he managed oh. to get a defensive frag anyway, even if he dies here. That's a great turnaround. Razy was almost guaranteed dead, but he is still here, alive. Just shooting down these rockets from above. That was perfectly played from Razy. I thought he was dead for sure. And some of that stuff just comes down to Razy's ridiculous combat skill. You know, he's one of the world's absolute greatest duelers. His ability to land those mid-air rockets, those flick shotguns, those flick rails in something like Sacrifice, that kind of ability will greatly help you out. 
comes down to these exchanges now. Maestro, the sword has been st uh, stolen away, but they still have it themselves. Garpy dropping it back off from above. Avex, they're trying to stop him, but I'm not quite sure they have a, the massive man advantage here. Maestro looking good. I mean, if they're going to get 20% left, which they've been able to take. Syndrome has the soul, but this is quite a detriment. But they're, they're already, you can see them trying to run in position to stop them from being able to safely do this. But there's the speed. Syndrome getting to that top speed. Very, very well done. Here comes help, trying to keep him a little bit far away. Wow, FaZe just pushing in there. Yeah, and FaZe will take him out. Still looking to capture and steal this soul. They have a lot of people here. It'll probably be at least a steal, but how far can they get with it? And there's that patience FaZe. Unfortunately, he did die for it, but was able to trade out the frag nonetheless. Hal is here. I think it can be a little bit trickier to go for those like delayed rockets where you wait for someone to land in something like Sacrifice. When it's so consistently, you've got those situations where you don't really have time to stop. You don't really have time to stop and think of how many people are on the map at any given time. But how? Nicely timed ball rush allowed him to take the quad damage, but a very smart idea actually to pass that on the Syndrome. With that full stack he's got, he's going to be much more of a headache with that mobility. Obviously with that super shotgun as well, but he gets taken out by Garpy, who now has that quad damage very comfortably. Kilson does manage to get the gauntlet kill, though taking so much of that damage. Actually surprised to see him survive it. I think it does take a certain degree of bravery to run at someone with quad damage with a gauntlet, but I think Kilson just knew he was so likely to get that frag, but Hal! Uh, FaZe, I should say, flying through Hal with that bull rush, just getting rid of him. And hell now, he's swimming together. But Avec, so much blood on this point. So many frags. They're just trading frags back and forth. Yeah. They've put cash in the lead. They have, and this is going to be a great win for them. They can pull it off. Only 15% left. But with how many people are pying into this obelisk at the same time, this is a crazy fight right now. But it looks like Cash are coming off slightly better. Are doing all right, Razy in the sidelines. But look how weak he is. I mean, like, it's so risky for him to take this fight. Yeah, even the smallest rocket was going to take him out there. The boys, I don't really think they can afford to be patient anymore. FaZe getting one frag, but they can't let them hold this any longer. They have to take this soul now. And, they, and now, 99%, they cannot afford the cash to get anything now. They have to drop this off and they have to hold it firmly. There's no one lying in wait. He was able to jump over Avec. Avec. He has to win this fight, but it looks like he can't. He gets completely sandwiched. They're one man down, and I don't think they can afford to no, be they're one above. man down. Two of them flying in from the top floor. They're coming in now. All of them together. Kilson trying to steal the soul away. But this is that situation. It was it was done to them before, but now they need to do it. If Kilson can make this passage unchallenged, and I think he might be able to. Who's in his way? Hell was waiting, but he was looking at the wrong place. Is that enough to secure the map? I'm not sure they're contesting it. He's still alive, but for how long? He is outnumbered heavily. They're contesting. FaZe is here as well with a friend. But he drops down. Garpy gets a frag, but dies himself. That is probably going to be it. Can they get it in time? No, they're still contesting, but he dies immediately. Razy is still at from a distance, but are they close enough? Are they close enough? I feel like they were no. at a point, but they're not. Cash pull things out at the last minute, and they've been able to tie things up one map each. Now, this is automatically a way better result for Cash, because after you saw it was a slightly more dominant start at the very beginning of Blood Covenant, I was quite worried about it because of how, how good Maestro were looking, but I feel like seeing as they've, they've fallen to Maestro in tournament before, and they've just lost the first map. It's it's so crucially important that they've been able to get this next map on deck. You know, it's it's like a morale thing. It's being able to send a message to Maestro to say, you've still got a fight for this one. You know, this is not going to be an easy win for you. But now it's going to be one map each. I guess the question is, who does this scenario affect negatively more? Is it Maestro or is it going to be Cash? I think, it's like you're saying, it's really important for Cash moving into now map three, knowing that having already lost to Maestro, they've shown that, okay, we can take maps. They've been able to make, you know, that was almost like a comeback, right? I mean, if, if memory serves me, that that really was like a strong round for them. They weren't winning the whole time, but they were able to salvage it together near the end. Um, whereas, you know, Maestro, we know Maestro are a very momentum heavy team. Um, and, you know, when, when they're riding that, that wave of momentum, they are almost impossible to stop. But at the same time, when things sort of, you know, really get to them and can pin them down, it does seem quite hard for them to get back from that sometimes, especially, you know, go back to Q QWC days. But, we know they, they've got a, a newer roster. You know, they've been playing very well under this four players they have now. Not to say they weren't doing before, but you know, clearly now this is a roster they are very, very good with at this point. Um, but Ruins of Sarnath will be the final map. And I think this is seeing a lot of play today. I think this is going to be good for Cash going in, knowing they were able to win such a dominating round, especially with like Avec and Kilson together, I think, really shining through and getting winning those crucial fights. I think a big part of that, though, was the power-up control. Because it actually looked like Cash, they got basically the majority of the first initial hits of the power-up whenever it would respawn. It was a combination of a lot of things. Uh, Syndrome in particular with Anarchy. Uh, I think he's he's really effective at using his Anarchy movement to 
to um, essentially with the, with the power up as as the topic, uh, his management of how to optimize, how to get health back when he's got something like protection, being able to make sure that um, when he's got quad damage, that if he's going to go down, there's going to be someone near him that can pick him up. Howl's timing on scale bearer was pretty immaculate during that map as well, where he was consistently making sure that his charge either allowed him to take the power up or it allowed someone else near him to take the power up instead. Um, and I think Howl just had a very, very impressive scale bearer indeed. And then obviously the combination of Kilson and Avec together, where you've got two of the world's greatest duelers on one team, that's going to be quite scary to deal with. But our final map being Runes of Sarnath, this historically has been a very good map for Maestro. Some of their greatest successes have actually come from this map in general. And we did see them play against Winra before, and we didn't really see... Historically, some of their champion picks have been... Uh, quite Ruins of Sanath specific, but I feel like at this stage, it's not really the case. I, are they going to go with the same lineup? Are we going to see Garpy on that Doom Slayer? Are we going to see the, the lineups that we've seen over and over again? Or with everything being on the line, I wonder, are we going to see things get mixed up? Are they going to bank it on some changes? All the all the hero uh, champions we've, we've seen them select on ruins, or like just I actually suppose generally all the hero uh, champions, I should say, that we've seen Maestro go with have all been strong on this map. So I feel like they had a lot of options here, a lot of creativity going into Runes of Sana. But it looks like it is going to be Solag that they're going to be banking this on, and Solag, the acid, does do a lot of damage. We already know that phase is phenomenal on Solag. So I'm expecting some good things here. Uh, actually, it looks like Avec has gone for Solag as well. So actually, uh, Solag on both teams. Actually, is it the same lineup back to back? Yeah, it's a complete it might, mirror. Yeah, it's a complete mirror. It, it makes team. sense because I, I feel like this lineup on both teams, it, it covers a lot of ground. I think ultimately when you're picking a, a sacrifice lineup, you want to tick the boxes. You know, what can your team do? Can they attack? Can they defend? Can they control? Can they seize Can they seize things like the power up all at the soul when it spawns initially? You know, how much health does this team tend to have? Uh, the advantage that some of these champions like Doom Slayer and Solag are going to have is that you're going to be getting fragged, consistently all the time so when you naturally spawn with a larger stack that's going to be very beneficial to you the thing is the fact that at the end of the day when you respawn you're just going to be stronger than the rest of the competition so when you're defending or something like that like if you go down on the obelisk and the soul gets taken but you respawn halfway through where you're near a weapon and you've got a full stack you now have more than enough that you need to actually fight back for the soul and take it back to your base so i think it's either way um very impressive to see what the teams have done so far but this being the final map very very important there's no time for mistakes you know this is the final map one of these guys will be moving forward in the grand finals to face off against winra license Salesman on the loser's side, which will be quite daunting in itself, but they've got to get through this final map. And these guys have been playing their hearts out for it. It'll be easier said than done, but we have to remember that this is last chance. This is qualification oh for the Dreamhack Winter. This is the, the best chance these guys will have of just making it directly tonight, but only one of these teams can unfortunately move through to do that. The question is, who is it going to be? But to be honest, with the, with the BYSC spots, look at all those colours on the uh, Soul Spawn. They're very pretty indeed. You have yellow, red, blue, green. But here comes FaZe with the pickup. I don't know if I'd say Acid's Puke Green is a pretty colour. I was more talking about the um, the sort of moss on the walls, which probably isn't even a pretty colour either. It's just green <laughs> I mean, it's sludge. I mean, exactly. I thought we had the same, the same problem here, kind of going around in circles. Here comes the power up in two seconds. FaZe is going to be able to control this. Very, very weak, so probably not. Here comes Kilson, but he himself. Ask, yep, definitely not going to last very long with Garpy looking for that jump pad. Here he comes, picking up the quad, and he is very, very healthy. But they have the soul as well. This was perfect for Maestro. They have the quad, and here we go, that machine gun just doing so much damage from this distance, and Maestro with a strong start now. And a lot of this quad damage left to go, to be honest. Oh, Avex, fate was sealed the second he touched that jump pad with Garpy laying in wait. damage there but nice and splash damage okay, taking pal down now there's not as much the thing is that like normally on ruins you would see like the team that defends on obelisk b one of their main objectives is to kind of like you know control that lower room where the lg spawned because back when lg was so much more prominent it was a very important room to control you know keep that vital weapon out of the enemy's hands so they can't just easily attack you but now the lg isn't really used as much there's not as much cause to actually defend that left room as much as there was before However, even though Cash got a really good coordinated attack with the jump pad, the three of them, they did lose the soul mid-transit and weren't even able to drop it off. And now Maestro's lead looking even stronger on the verge of half ready. And it's only been two minutes. Still though, Syndrum is here ready for two shotgun kills, but Razy can't return. But has the soul, but can they leave? Does he win this fight? Yes, there's the outnumber. Because he comes in to support and save the day. 
even though they're starting to win these fights, it's still constantly taking place on the obelisk. So even though that fight was going on, it was still climbing percentage the whole time. Syndrome can't survive. Look at that phase. Goes down too. But how? The acid. It kills him eventually. But no, he gets the health at the last minute. No, no. Yeah. The important thing is that he was able to drop that off before he died. I think he'll know that too. It was better yeah, to tick down just enough. I think that was probably the final tick, right? It looked like it. Yeah, it definitely looked like it was the final one. Ooh, speaking of which, the protection going to be up in a few seconds. Looks like Maestro have the manpower here, but the fight's breaking out. Oh, that's 100% going towards Maestro here. Oh, here comes Razy with that anarchy. This is going to be kind of hard to stop, I think. Here comes Razy full speed ahead. He's got a nice amount of armor. He's going to get that little health bubble as well if he even needs to. Yeah, they, the they, they can't really focus on defense. They just have to focus on stopping it in transit, but easier said than done. And there, there's that pathing again. Maestro have been doing that all day on Ruins. They've been, as, they, as soon that as they, disgusting, that was, that was really nice. As soon as they get this obelisk, their way of getting back to it is always via rocket jump over that wall, and they are yet to be stopped. Here comes a very angry Garpy with his fists out. Maybe get another frag, but doesn't even need it, really. I think they were able to get so many frags without it. I think they're just happy with the defense, to be honest. This is looking like a, a definite change of pace what we saw last time. The Blood Covenant was so close pretty much all three rounds. But with Maestro, this has been a historically very successful map for these guys. I don't know why. Look at this dominance. How it's being wow. So oh, actually still able to drop it off, but a little while longer to do it. I gotta say, that was a really impressive point blank rail. I think he, he, he had to bet the farm on that too after the uh, Berserk Punch, but good thing he got it. How looking really strong. See Maestro starting to position. So I believe it's phased down here waiting, but he's been snuffed out. Still here, dies immediately. Oh, getting that nice tri bolt kill. Garpy getting his own double. Getting his rockets down, making his damage count. Massively outnumbered though here. All that work undone straight away. Now it looks like Hash will be able to stabilize this obelisk. Now we have wait. Seen, we've seen this before, you know, where they've been really far behind, but they've been able to sort of get a solid defense. But I think their ability to sort of stay on top of things, right, where teams have this constant issue previously in Sacrifice where, yes, they can drop the soul off, but it's a matter of that's that's half the job. You know, the, the hard bit is actually making sure you keep it consistently and not allowing that lead to snowball as heavily as it is. But I don't feel like that's the case when these two teams look pretty evenly matched so far. Here comes the power up. How piles in, but goes face first into a quad damage. And there we go, four frags back to back. That's an entire team wiped out, even though uh, Cash have actually been able to bring this back dramatically almost tied up even for even they have lost the mega health and power up and now Kilson is the first casualty as they siege this obelisk Avex soon to follow now gonna be four versus two as they move back through to their obelisk they have still the soul in hand and a little bit of this quad damage still left Oof, enough to do the damage at least get two frags by the looks of things now Razy was forced to waste a oh, little oh, nice he was he was forced to waste a little bit of time when he collected that quad because at the end of the day he really needed that mega health but it wasn't ready yet so it took an extra few seconds did allow cash to get a little bit of extra percentage so if this for whatever reason does go down to like 99 versus 99 round maybe the time wasted will be one of those things you kind of have to reflect on but ultimately i think he didn't really have much of a choice they've got four percent left to take but look at how many members of cash are piling in they do not want to go out just yet he did a lot of damage first syndrome very weak here trying to get through will eat a rocket and phase comes flying in garpy also they have three people here trying to control 1% left to go. He dies on the point. Is that enough? Can they get close enough to contest? Oh, they? they got stuck. No, they the didn't. Air. It went anyway. I think at the last minute there were Avec. I kind of looked like he was like pretty much full, like face first going into the obelisk, but he got hit by a rocket and he was just stuck in the air. He's not able to sort of move himself forward with 1% left to go. If he's stuck in the air by a rocket, even if he doesn't go down, wasting that time is more than enough. That's going to be match point for Maestro. Not bad at all. Still, new round, fresh start. Cash, unfortunately, one round away from being eliminated. But I mean, to be still very much do this. If you actually look at the health, Cash are quite weak. You know, they haven't got much health and armor on deck. So I mean, that's actually why we saw Kilson sit at the back, maybe trying to pepper some of those nails down, putting himself not really at arm's reach. But because they're so much more healthier, we can see Maestro. It's way easier for them to just pile in and take that soul away. And wow, here comes How. An airborne berserk punch. You never get tired of seeing that one. Rage trying to drop it off. Now they have this obelisk again. They have looked very strong defending this one specifically. Now they have it for what could be the final round. I'm actually here. surprised that um, Razy was still alive after that. Surviving that with 2 HP was uh, quite fortunate, but there's Garpy with the quad damage. We're we are seeing a repeat. 
Can he get out alive? No, he can't. There's the rocket coming through. And Maestro with a mirrored start where they get the early drop off, they get the quad damage, and they're going to get some guaranteed percentage here. Fighting for this is going to be so hard while Garpy maintains this quad power up. That's for a little while longer. It's more than enough time to do some serious damage, but I don't think you even think he needs to as Maestro themselves as a unit. Doing a great job! Oh, one oh. final rocket syndrome. Nice to think Duke Brown waiting for some armor, but it isn't going to be there. There's that 30 to 0. Wilson piles in. A couple of good rocket dodges returned by one of his own. Nice midair on Razy, actually. But he's still here. Soul has been stolen away. Trying to get it through. Good throw getting it over the wall. Syndrome there, ready and waiting to catch it. Oh, here's where the defense is going to need to come through, but himself is very, very weak. It's good they didn't get caught by the rail, but Hell is able to finish the job and get a second one anyway. It's a nice hit. How popped his Berserk, so even though he actually went down before Berserk went through there, he's going to lose that for a significant amount of time. It's always unfortunate when you lose a, a ability like that before you've managed to get anything going. It's pretty much just gone for 40 seconds without you really achieving much. Wow, oh, Garpy. Speaking of Berserk, his was ready to go. Going through, there's a Gauntlet in the way, but still going to have enough tankiness just to try and survive it. But Kilson flying in with the Gauntlet and the Plasma Trail won't survive that. We are starting to see the fight take place towards the middle of the map a little bit more again. Kilson has to go for the drop-off, but he's quite weak himself, actually. Catches oh, Razy. The yeah. Three quick gauntlet strikes, and Razy is taken from 100% to nothing at all. Unchallenged as well, which is really good, seeing as he only had two health. I mean, all he had to do was turn around there, but Hell commands the quad damage. And we've seen Hell go on some really impressive shotgun rampages before, so simply put, he has to do it again. Take a lot of damage here. No, he will actually get out damaged. Hal's gonna beat him in that 1v1. Still though, enough of uh, Maestro are here. Put a stop to it. And still maintain the soul and keep hold of the quad damage, which is super important. But that, that's the important thing is that Garfi was able to sort of throw the soul away and essentially sit there and wait. Um, you know, he, he doesn't want to be the one that has the soul carried. If he's got quad damage, it's gonna be way easier to hit him. It's more beneficial that he kind of acts as like a defender. Here comes FaZe. Can he get the drop off? He's surrounded by enemies. Has been able to drop things off, but with that many people around him, I wonder how long it's gonna be dropped off for. They've survived long enough so far. Actually, it's been quite good for them at the moment. There are a lot of people here trying to stop it, but they haven't managed to steal it just yet as the percentage is continuing to climb for Maestro. 50% now half the way through. This could be the final round for them here. They just need to win this one and Cash will be eliminated. They're doing good so far. Carapel will be up for another minute. There's that Berserk. Even before you see it, you can hear it. And that gives a lot of people knowledge about, right, expect this Doomslayer to come swinging. That is one of the downsides to... Be Ooh. Uh oh, <laughs> I think that didn't look uh, deliberate from FaZe, unfortunately, but still. Has enough teammates here, but now Cash choose to go in. This also could be a bit more punishing than an uh, anticipated, I think. Yeah, I think accidentally blowing yourself up in that kind of situation would be quite costly, but Hell has been able to answer back. And I love using the Plasma Trail in that certain part of the map because it's such a small area. If you want to chase that down, you kind of have no choice but to just face the damage that comes through there. There's not really much room to move around the Plasma Trail. Just coming through, getting a nice double while he holds on, but no, cannot make it as triple as FaZe comes flying through again with that rocket jump. From above, now 75%. This is getting really bad for Cash. The protection's up for 10 seconds. If Cash lose this protection, they will lose the round on it. It is going to be so hard for them to fight into a protection. We're now this far behind in percentage, but they're managing to ch oh, trade a few frags here. Quite sure, Kilson. Oh. Still doing well, and Syndrome, in fact, is the one with that protection now. It's so performant for them to really control this one. It was important that he had his injection, too. You know, the second I saw him with 10 HP, I was quite worried. It's good that he was able to get the injection off at that moment. It's definitely kept him alive, and it kept him in this fight. How was able to meet him off? He's still got a bunch of health left, even though 40 may not look like a huge amount. Seeing as it's four times damage reduction, it's quite significant. Oh, also, we have to remember, you know, when you're holding on to that protection, and you are near someone to kill, you get a kill. Armor shards. You know, even armor shards do an amazing job of just topping you back up when you've got protection because it's four times more value for everything. Oh, you just get death from above right there. Now, Maestro are massively in the lead, but I'm not going to say it's impossible. Cash have been able to hold on nice to crazy shot. amounts of percentages before. And there's that, there's that double jump. You know, that, that is exactly case in point why Doom Slayer is so effective in this rocket meta. Really nice mid-air quick turnaround punch on that Berserk. Well played from Garpy. So 
And they're trying to meet him in the middle. Syndrome's going with those defensive nails. Hell with 9 HP left. Has to be very careful. How just needs one more blast of that machine gun. He does manage to hit his mark. Maze. He's got to be so careful. Gonna try and be unpredictable here. And here comes that passive coming through for Sorlag. So fast indeed. Lovely mobility and lovely movement. And he finished things off with a kill on Kilton as well. That may have been the play that could win this entire uh -oh. match. Phase's passing was perfect. It might be this is gonna be a 1v1. He's very weak here though. Oh, the Berserk point just come through, but how does it manage to make it connect? The plasma trail coming through, but with no health left at all. Phase is making a miracle happen and holding on all of that percentage. 100%, that's it, they've done it. All of that because FaZe had that amazing movement onto the obelisk and then with almost no health left whatsoever, held on for dear life on the obelisk and just took out attack after attack after attack. At the last minute there, FaZe was the definite MVP. Like that was the final play that sealed the deal. How he was able to, because you saw how many members there of Cash were trying to meet them in the middle, you know, making it so it was going to be so hard for Maestro to get that drop off. But FaZe is perfect. Parthing the fact that he just took the right routes and obviously using Sawlag's pass with wow. that double jump uh, with the rocket as well. I think that was uh, quite nice to see. You know, it was very, very good to see. And it's, they're moving on into grand finals now, facing off against the WinRAR licensed salesman where they're going to get their run back. But they had to fight for their lives just to be in grand finals. You know, this entire time, no doubt WinRAR would have been watching these games as well. So they, they would have been watching their competition at work. But realistically, they've just had to run a marathon to get into grand finals. But seeing as it's a double elimination grand finals, it's nowhere near over. They've got to win two more best of threes. And we'll get into that in due time. Before we get into our grand finals, we're going to go for a very quick break and set the match up so it don't go anywhere because Quake Champion Sacrifice for EU will be back after this.